So here's the thing about Pyroar, is not good. While it does have decent offensive stats with its base 109 special attack and 106 speed, one of its many problems is that it just has no setup moves to boost. But there is a workaround. With its unique fire and normal typing, we can use a strong stab hyper voice, which then activates the throat spray item, which boosts our special attack by one stage. It does now get access to the move Trailblaze, and we can use this to boost our speed by one stage as well. Or you could just use Flame Charge since the damage doesn't really matter. If we're able to set up into full form, we can actually get pretty out of hand with strong stab moves like Flamethrower and Hyper Voice, which we can boost even further with the Terra Normal. Pyroar has literally 0% usage, but this thing can be a beast. Here's what really grinds my gears about Pyroar specifically. This thing has three abilities and they're all bad. Rivalry is not worth using. Moxie is also not worth using because this thing has a base attack of 68 and Unnerve is just kind of there. But I do think Pyroar is kind of neat, so I'm gonna show it some love. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free and I'm on my way to 400K and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Slazzle. This thing is stanced the hell up out here. And I toss out the Quagsire who looks like he doesn't know what the hell to do with his hands. So at this point, I'm really feeling like they probably switched this thing out here and I can just kind of take this opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock, potentially some spikes and have myself a nice little Quagsire time. So it turns out they actually stay in, they go for the Toxic uh, rather than getting this thing out of here. It is in fact four times weak to ground. But it turns out that this Salazzle has absolute balls of steel. I, it, it is a female, but still, tremendous nuts on Shorty over here. So, uh, it does make sense. The Quagsire being toxic does limit what this thing can do. Puts it on a timer, and as they don't seem to have great ga grass coverage, see, this thing is going to be annoying. So, at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for an Earthquake. I've seen substitute sets. I'm not going to play games out here. But instead, they do just go right into the freaking Orthworm, who, of course, just... It's gonna have a nice little dirt breakfast, as uh, it is gonna get that Earth Eater, and uh, Earthworm is just staring into my soul as it just eats up my Earthquake. But honestly, pretty menacing. So, at this point, Quagsire does not have much to do here, and I figure there's two things that uh, Earthworm does. Essentially, it's gonna either set up their own Stealth Rock, or they're just gonna go right for that Shed Tail. So, I figure this is a good opportunity for me to bring in the Mimikyu. I kind of expect the Shed Tail here. The reason why I go to Mimikyu is because as soon as something touches me, it is then going to have to get red carded out, waste the HP on the Earthworm, getting up that Shed Tail, and also just stir some nonsense up. So, it turns out they do go for the Stealth Rock there, and I'm kind of free to go ahead and get a nice little Swords Dance here. I really like this Mimikyu as just like a, a solid momentum blocker, but also it can get pretty out of hand with the uh, with the Swords Dance setup. So, they're actually going to end up switching into the Landorus, but he is standing on an invisible table, and I am over here dancing with some Swords. So, as the Intimidate comes through, of course, I'm only chilling at plus one, but I kind of figure a play rough still does some pretty significant damage as they do in fact outspeed and go for the U-turn. It's a good play because while that does break my disguise, absolutely snap my neck, it is going to kind of keep the Landorus safe. Now, it also does activate the red card, so instead of U-turning into something that they would want to, it just brings out a, a random team member, and that's going to end up being the Salazzle. Which is unfortunate, because as I go for the play rough here, it does take some significant stealth rock chip, but also, okay, play rough's not going to do too much there. So, in this situation, the Salazzle does threaten me with something like a sludge bomb. So, I do want to get out of here, and while I did use up my red card, the Mimikyu does still have some value in the back. So, I'm just going to go ahead and make the aggressive play right into the Jirachi. I'm coming in thinking, surely they go for a sludge bomb, but instead, they actually go for the flamethrower. But he goes right off onto all fours for that. And that's how you know that shit's gonna hurt. But it actually, I end up living, which is surprising. Um, I kind of expected to live there, but this does allow Jirachi now to disappoint me. It goes for that Zen Headbutt as I'm able to outspeed with the Scarf, and I just straight up miss. I swear to God, this thing has the biggest forehead in the game and still can't hit a freaking Zen Headbutt. So that is annoying, and Jirachi basically just go down, goes down for nothing. And you do, in fact, hate to see it. But this is going to allow me a nice little position here to try to get the Pyro going. So as I bring this thing in, of course, uh, I am going to take a nice little chunk from that Stealth Rock. But the most important part is that I know that I can, in fact, take one attack from this thing. If it's going to be like a Sludge Wave, Sludge Bomb, I should be able to take at least one, fire off a Trailblaze at it just for that speed boost and then start doing some pyro nonsense. But instead, they actually end up switching this thing out, which is honestly fine by me. I just go for the Trailblaze, just essentially 
don't even want the damage. I'm doing it just for that speed boost, and sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So, they actually end up going into the toxic packs here, and Pex is just playing a never-ending game of Peekaboo, and this thing is annoying as shit. But, while I go for that Trailblaze, I get a nice little plus one to speed. And at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of, I'm here for it. With plus one speed, I should be able to outrun everything on their side. And if I go for that Terra Normal, even if they do hit me with a super effective water attack here, I am now no longer fire. Call me, I'm not Pyro anymore. Call me just Roar out here. No Pyro involved. So I put the diamond on my head on the chance that they go for whatever, like a liquidation or something. And it's time to just do some yelling. I go for that Hyper Voice, AKA Hyper Roar. And that's gonna do a nice little chunk of damage where it's looking like a two hit KO, but that does also activate the throat spray, which now gives me that plus one to special attack. And they're just gonna take this opportunity to set up the toxic spikes, which is honestly amazing for me. Uh, regardless, if they went for an attack, I know I can take anything. Uh, however, just at least getting that chip on this thing and now being at plus one speed and plus one special attack, I am kind of fully in a position to see what we can do with the Pyroar. So, they're gonna go ahead and switch this thing out. Probably not a bad play just because of Regenerator. That asshole can come back in with some more health. Except uh, as they bring in the Tinkaton here, this thing is going to have to, you know, take the Hyper Voice, which it does resist. And this little Fairy Fool is, in fact, pretty specially defensive. Uh, but I can do a nice little chunk there, which is cool. And then also, it's looking like at plus one, a Flamethrower should be able to knock this thing out. So I go for the Flamethrower here. And it turns out this thing lives on one HP, literally one. And I do, in fact, also get the burn, which is extremely clutch because now with that reduced attack, a gigaton hammer is not going to be enough to take me out. And then this thing dies to the burn. I really considered going for the fire blast in that situation just for the extra damage, but I just didn't want to miss. And so flamethrower, it, it one way or another comes in clutch for us. And that is hilarious. So Tinkaton goes down and knowing what they have left, honestly, Pyroar is positioned pretty well to try to uh, try to make some make some nonsense happen. So they go back into the Orthworm, and of course Steel Type number two is also not gonna enjoy a flamethrower. So they're actually just gonna go ahead and bust out the Terra Ghost. I figure a Terra is coming here, and the Terra Ghost is there to not take damage from fighting moves, and it is also going to now allow it to be like a neutral hit with the flamethrower, but it turns out Pyroar is the absolute goat, and also Orthworm is built different when it comes to being hit by special attacks, and that actually still knocks that thing out, which is amazing. Stab Flamethrower, listen, it now hurts. And also, Orthworm is looking like a dead 4th of July hot dog that was left on the barbecue for too long, and that is amazing. So, now as Toxapex does come back in, it has more health than it once had, however, I can still just go for that Hyper Voice. It's already stabbed, it's boosted by Terra, and at plus one. I figure it knocks it out, we actually end up getting the crit, which I do not believe mattered. That does take care of the pecs, and Pyro is going places that it has <laughs> never gone before. Because now, as they go into the Landorus, as long as this thing isn't Choice Scarf, uh, I do actually still outspeed. And even freaking Landorus is not going to enjoy getting yelled at by by Pyro over here. Female lions, they do not play games, man. We're out here the ones doing the hunting, and I do outspeed. Hyper Voice just takes care of it. Down goes the Landorus. And that is real nice, because now they're down to two Pokemon left, and we should be able to outspeed both. Now, Baxcalibur comes in, and a lot of Baxcalibur these days are just loaded dice with, like, a potential Dragon Dance. And while it does have the option for an Ice Shard, if it doesn't, you just we get the cleanest sweep of Pyro possible. They do not go for that Ice Shard, which is awesome. And the Hyper Voice is enough to take care of it. With that Stealth Rock chip, down goes Big Spooky Dragon, and I am just just a lion over here, literally just chilling. I got my hair going through the diamond, absolutely could not be flexing any harder. So the final Pokemon is gonna be the Silazzle, and while this thing is quick as hell, it is not quite quicker than the plus one speed Pyroar. Pyroar has such a weird speed stat that it's nice to be able to outspeed base 100s, but even with a plus one, we're extremely quick. That does take care of the Silazzle, and that is gonna be the end of the game. That truly could not have gone probably any better. Uh, in our favor, and sometimes that's the way she goes. So that was a super fun game. Pyro is a menace, and you already know I've got game number two lined up. So this time we're going up against a very spooky looking team. I also have a little bit of a team switch of my own, but the main thing is I have the Pyro. So it's like, what else? What else could you possibly need? Am I right? Let's get into it. 
So the first thing to note is on the other side, I do see the Hisuian Zorark. So I gotta be like looking at everything thinking, are you, are you in fact a Zorark? As they lead off with the freaking Sandy Shocks, it turns out this thing is in fact just the Sandy Shocks because it does get that Protosynthesis, boosts up that special attack, and honestly, this thing is kind of scary. Now, I do have the Bastiodon, who, while I know I have the Sturdy, I can definitely take an attack here, and I'm basically just going to use it up to try to get that Stealth Rock up. It's going to be useful, and honestly, I don't have much that wants to switch in to a, a boosted Earth Power. So, as I get those rocks up, this Basti does in fact have a little, a little snack in store. So I can go for an earthquake here and while this thing does outspeed me, I just bust out the berry and that's gonna allow me to move faster than I normally would and I can now get off a super effective earthquake which actually also is not even gonna do half because what the hell and that does allow them to finish me off with the earth power. So I basically kind of just needed to use up Basti here. I couldn't really switch into anything and the amount of chip that I got should allow Doug Trio now to switch in on a position to be able to finish it off and also be quicker because it has a special attack boost and over speed. So I'm just gonna bring in everybody's favorite gangster hot dogs and Thug Trio is here to trap him in and allow this thing to cause no more damage to the squad. They cannot switch. And now an earthquake is just gonna go ahead and finish the job, which is nice. That thing honestly is quite scary. And I kind of expected it to be a stealth rock lead, to be honest, but it just it came out with some with some hands, and that was kind of scary. But now they get a switch into whatever they like, and they do in fact have this fishy fella, the Vaporeon. So here's a fun fact about Vaporeon. This thing is annoying to kill. And of course Doug Trio has no business staying in here. So I consider going into Assault Vest Blastoise, but then I just have nothing to hit this thing in return. So instead. I'm actually just going to go into the Vicavolt. Now, I like using Vicavolt mostly just because a lot of the time people use these as like a sticky web support. But when you bust out the Choice Specs one, it just does more damage than people expect. So I come in, I take a Surf, and that does honestly kind of hurt a little bit. But in general, Vaporeon is just going to be kind of a defensive annoyance. And at this point, I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch. I figure you know, they probably don't leave this thing in. They can actually outspeed because, of course, I'm like the slowest damn bug, like everything from Alola. And that allows them to go for the flip turn. But it actually get the benefit of being slow here because now whatever they decide to switch into, the Vicavolt has the uh, momentum in terms of getting my Volt switch off and then I can get a little matchup while also getting some huge damage. So they actually decide to go into Sneasler here, probably thinking that this thing uh, can take an attack easily and then start to do some crazy, crazy Sneasler nonsense. But I'm actually able to go for that Volt switch and with the choice specs, straight up one hit kills the guy. And that is why we like Choice Specs Vicavolt. This thing hits like a damn truck if you can ever get an attack off being slow as shit. So we will absolutely take it as Sneasler is kind of the main mon that I've been worried about in this matchup. And now I don't have to worry about it. But what I do have to worry about is while I'm able to get my switch in, they now get to see that and then determine a matchup. So I just decided to go into the Pyroar because I'm like, you know what, this is fine. I'm gonna see uh, if I can get Pyroar to, to do some more nonsense. So they decide now to go into the Vaporeon and I figure it is time. I'm just gonna bust out the Terra Normal and you know the drill. Now, I do have to get off the Trailblaze if I wanna have any chance at outspeeding uh, the threats in the back. So as I go for this Terra Normal, what that does is it puts me in a spot where now I'm feeling like I can take two attacks, at least two Surfs from the Vaporeon. So as I go for the Trailblaze, I need that damage, but I also mainly need that speed boost. It does a little bit of a chunk to the thing, and more importantly, they go for the Surf here, and it comes down to the point where it's gonna be just shy of a two-hit KO, which is actually perfect, because if you know anything about Vaporeon, they never die. But this thing's looking like it's in a spot where now I can go for one Terra Normal boosted Hyper Voice, and then get that Throat Spray, and then the second one should be able to take care of it. And also, knowing that uh, unless they get a crit Surf or extremely high roll, I should be pretty safe here, so. I go for the first Hyper Voice, does a nice little chunk of damage here, and they are instead going to actually go for the flip turn over the Surf here. They probably just see uh, it not as a kill trying to conserve the Vaporeon, but they're actually now in a position where Pyroar is about quick as hell. And while they do have the Doggo with the damn sword in his mouth, repping the crown looking real scary, uh, this thing comes in, it gets its attack boost and does his old crazy nonsense. Except, I am in fact faster than this thing. So I can actually outspeed going for a flamethrower at plus one. I know is actually a kill here and that is really clutch. That uh, throat spray was kind of the only reason why I'm able to grab the kill there. But that is uh, pretty damn nice. As uh, now they go back into Vaporeon and I'm looking at this thing thinking, hey, 
you're looking more healthy than the real guy. And of course, that means this thing is in fact the Zorark. Probably trying to trick me into going for Hyper Voice, but I ain't falling for that nonsense. I can just go for the Flamethrower. Even if it's Focus Sash, it is not intact because of that Stealth Rock. And we see right through the damn illusion, and down goes the Zorark. So, again, Pyro has found himself in a spot where with just pretty much one speed boost, he can actually start to break some holes in teams, and it's real fun. So, now they decide to go into the Incineroar. Now, as Incineroar comes in and takes that Stealth Rock chip, it probably would have come in earlier had it been more of a special defensive variant. Uh, so that leads me to believe this thing probably dies to a Hyper Voice if it's not like max HP or max Spadef. So I go for that Hyper Voice and it does just take care of this thing with a crit. So I guess we'll never know. But that is a dead kitty and I am a kitty on a damn rampage. So final Mon is going to be this Vaporeon who is not looking too hot over there. We're down below half and we should be able to just finish it off with a Hyper Voice. And uh, Pyroar is actually way more fun than you'd think it would be. It's tough to find positions, uh, you know, to get that Trailblaze off. As it has lower defense, it's not living super effective attacks. But I'm telling you, if you can, if you can position this thing very carefully, Pyroar can, in fact, have a pretty good time. I just think it's fun to have the, uh, the dual stab with normal and fire. It's just unique. And uh, it's always just been a Pokemon that I've enjoyed. So thank you guys very much for watching. For real, I do appreciate all the support. I have a lot of fun just cooking up random mons and trying to get them to do stuff. And uh, I appreciate you guys in you seem to enjoy it. So thank you again. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. And I will catch you next time. Peace out.